Hello beautiful soul, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new, um, welcome, I hope you stay. My job as Joanna is to provide information from <clears throat> higher vibrating positive sources uh, in order to help us all experience more of our greatness. So every single word that comes out of my mouth is aligned with that intention, with that higher purpose. <clears throat> so if you are here to experience more of your greatness, then I hope you stay. This is a second um, part uh, of the video um, about the lunar eclipse on May 5th. Um, so if you want to listen to the energies and what we're going through globally, that video is underneath. It's the earlier video. And for those of you who just want to go straight to the piles, I would, if I were you, I would encourage you to listen to the general energies because it is all connected. Like it all, whatever you hear in the piles, is likely going to make a lot more sense to you based on what the what the earlier video talks about. I just needed to cut it because it was getting too long. So um, you can use these messages at any point. They're not time tied. In fact, I would encourage you not to lock yourself into too many boxes. That's my, my, my job really is to help people get out of their own boxes. So if you're watching it around the May 5th, 2023, wonderful. But if you happen to stumble upon it three weeks later or three months later or a year later for that matter, uh, there will be messages that are likely very relevant to you, okay? So in this, um, in this video, I am going to be basically going through three piles and asking the universe to deliver messages to you that you need at this particular moment, at this particular time, okay? <clears throat> so let's get going. File number one, what does the universe uh, want you to know? Oh, we have positive movement forward. For, forward. I'm getting a um, timeline of about three months. I, I, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't, I did immensely dislike this term, immensely. Um, I don't focus on predictions and but they come to me. So because they come, I share it. I may not feel comfortable with it because you can't prove it. Okay. But down the road, you can, you might be, well, down the road, you might be able to see it. What I'm getting is a period of three months. Within the next three months, there's going to be a positive movement for you. Okay. This is not just the career movement. This is um, uh, several things. Career movement, which I believe that's what Eight Pentacles state stands for. <clears throat> Relationship movement. Um, ability to move out of one country to another. So actually physically changing locations. For some of you, uh, it, it's a company you are trying to get out of. Now, it could be a company as a um, corporate identity or a company like a you know a group of people. Okay, that you are trying to get out of. Um, you're, you're also trying not to make it a big mess, whatever that means to you. Um, I would say kudos to that. Please don't make a big mess unless it's absolutely necessary because, well, mess is, messes get messy. So unless you want to have mess on your hand, don't mess things up. <clears throat> don't create a mess. Uh, for some of you, I see you signing on a dotted, lo dotted line and you're you're just happy to be done with it. I'm done. I'm just hear hearing the word divorce. <clears throat> For some of you, it's a separation, matrimonial separation. Now, if you're listening to this um, right now and you're in a super happy relationship or you don't have a significant other, then obviously that does not apply to you. <clears throat> this is to someone who is already married, is in a matrimonial type relationship, could also be common law. Okay, so there's a, there's definitely a transition. Okay, uh, for some of you, probably very few of you, you are moving and your partner doesn't want to go with you. 
this is interesting because this is quite specific. It's not that your partner doesn't want to go with you. It's their own commitments are great and the person cannot let go of their commitments. So now interesting because you might be thinking, well, <clears throat> then that person is making their commitment more important than being with me. That's not necessarily true. <clears throat> For example, and this is a scenario that's coming up. So this is just a metaphor. Let's say you're with a, someone who takes care of um, his or her mother who is quite ill. Okay. And they don't want to put her in any home. You, you take that person takes care of his or her mother and you got a great opportunity um, to elevate yourself at a job and it requires you to move and your partner says, I'm sorry, I, I can't go. That's not your partner choosing his mom over you. Th that I'm going to go there. I'm going to say it. that would be very unfair to make that to make that statement. So I don't know who I'm speaking with, but or two. And I hope it doesn't happen because that's a hard decision. But if someone is choosing to stay and they're making a choice, yes, because of their own commitment. It isn't necessarily because they're choosing their commitment over you. It's not that easy, okay? It's not that black and white. In fact, very few things in life are black and white. So whatever the situation is for somebody, it requires a higher level understanding. Maybe if this, or it could be taking off something, uh, a job, it could be taking of anything, uh, taking care of anything. All I'm saying is if you are moving, and your partner is not able to move with you for whatever reason, it doesn't automatically mean that the partner is choosing something else over you. It doesn't mean that. Okay, so do yourself a favor and really look into it before you get mad or angry or even bitter. I don't know who I'm speaking with, okay? Not only that, <clears throat> I see it possibly as a very workable thing. So this is for someone very, very specific. It could just be one person. <clears throat> if you're in a committed, loving relationship, this may be where you are leaving for purposes other than a split. You are leaving because you got a you got a great opportunity and a person stays behind. But then for some time later, I see this person joining you. Okay, so I don't know who this is for. Very interesting. Um, for those of you who are not in relationships, obviously. If this talks about divorce, it doesn't apply to you. For you could, for you, this could be relating a job or a career. Okay. And all of this is positive. Now, the lunar, the lunar, the lunar May fifth eclipse. I was talking about it in the other video. It feels like we're we're sandwiched between the eclipse that happened late April, and that energy creates a lot of pressure and also potential for growth. And it it was shown to me as eliminating or, le or letting go of things that no longer serve us. So what I'm saying here is that positive changes coming through for you, pile number one, a lot of positivity, but some pieces will feel like a drag. Okay, so there are some, most of it is positive, but there will be some inconveniences that you will feel as a result of this positive move. So here's what I'm going to say. Focus on the positive and not on the irritation. The irritation is just, it's just part of this process. Okay. Obviously month, August is the eighth month. This may be applying to you uh, in or around the month of August. What is the other supportive information? 17 earth. Okay, so I'm going to tune into you. Um, what I'm getting here right away is a drummer. Drummer, pianist, someone who plays uh, accordion, someone who, I'm speaking to someone who has a desire to express himself or herself through an instrument, but they're holding themselves back. If this is you, if I'm speaking to you, um, I just heard mother 
Mother Gaia is speaking to you. Mother Gaia is speaking to you. I just have this strange message, but I want to say it. You, through your voice and through your musical expression, have the ability to communicate a message that is worthy of receiving, okay? I don't know who this is for, but give yourself permission to at least try doing the thing you love, okay? There's something that wants to be expressed through you. But you've you like you've been holding off, you've been, no, it's not for me. You've been this is a part of you that you have been denying yourself of. This could also be healing abilities. If you are someone who is drawn to healing arts or arts, uh it, it has a I want to say nature based to it. I don't know how else to explain it. Cooking, um, natural. If, if you're pulled to that kind of an expression, I feel like it could be, I'm going to say the word profitable for you. I don't know who you are. Again, it feels a very specific message, but I will say, the universe wants more of your talents out on the table to be displayed. If this is you, I would encourage you to let go of the fears that you have around displaying your talents, your gifts, your natural, your naturally born gifts. Also, uh, you, some of you are natural, natural born leaders. Okay and you want nothing to do with it. No, no thank you, I'm not a leader. Well, if you keep telling yourself that you're not a leader, then you likely are the leader, you just don't like the responsibility of expressing yourself as a leader, okay? But leader, you are. So if this is you, do yourself a favor. Stop denying this aspect of yourself. Just own it. Own it. Okay, I am a leader. <gasps> oh, God. Yes. Okay, I am a leader. And then decide what do you want to do with it? Do you want to lead people to good places? Do you want to lead your life better? Do you want to lead your life? Maybe you're not used to leading your life. Maybe you're used to your life being led by others. Why on earth would you want that? Why wouldn't you want to lead your own life? It's yours, isn't it? You be the leader of your own life. Yes, you are qualified. What if you're scared? It's natural. If you're scared, it simply means it's something quite substantial. Remember, you are a powerful being. Like it or not. Whether you choose to express your natural talents or abilities or not will depend on how confident you feel about yourself and the fears you hold about yourself. If you're a very fearful person, if you fear lack, if you fear dominance other dominance over you if you fear like you can't do better if you fear all these are the things that most human fears but if you live in your fear a lot you will not be expressing yourself as a leader you will be pretending to be a leader but you will that, does, that is not to say that leaders are not afraid of course they are but they have to lead regardless of their fear. They have to move through their fears. They don't, they can't just abandon their leadership position. They have to move through it. I feel this is for some of you who are naturally born leaders, but you are terrified 
you're terrified of your either leading ability, uh, who's gonna follow me? Um, I hear that I hear this statement. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Maybe you often refer to yourself as something being wrong with you. You gotta look at your vocabulary, okay? Because certainly, if you believe there is something wrong with you, you're not gonna lead your life. You're gonna let someone else lead your life. And what if somebody else leads your own life and that's not how you want it? What if you have a different desire? Will you still let them lead? Be your own leader. And there, I, there, there are so many meanings with this message right now. Like I feel like it's a sandwich, layers and layers of different messages. So each person will derive their own message from this. You are a natural born leader, like it or not. It does not mean that you will have to be in a powerful leader-like position. It doesn't mean that, though chances are you're likely drawn to them or you've been placed in these positions as life moved on. There's a natural, almost, tendency to be pulled towards leading roles, okay? If that's you, own it. Own it. You are a natural born leader. And notice how your body receives that. Does it scare you to death? Does it excite you? Does it make you go, hmm, I never thought of myself as a natural born leader. Well, you are. What do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with it? Because to be a leader is to be in power. It's to be in charge. You are a natural born leader. What does that say? You are in power and in charge of yourself all the time. Is that how you feel? No. Do you want to feel this way? Then accept your position in leading your life powerfully with authority. That's you. Okay. Number one and seven, there are several ways I can take this. July, I keep hearing July. So it looks like August, July. Maybe this movement with work, there's some authority stuff going on there. Expressing your authority, becoming your more of your authority. Um, change in direction, definitely change in direction here. But in July, there must there might be something that may, will make sense to you about what I'm speaking to right now, okay? And you, whatever this is, if you are questioning your own ability, I hear you are absolutely capable. Yes, you are absolutely capable. I just heard I'm not responsible enough. Yes, you are. You are responsible. For some of you, take a look at your idea around responsibility. Does it scare you? In fact, does it terrify you? Um, and if so, especially for those of you who are scared or terrified by, by responsibility of, let's say, being a leader, um, just tune into that shadow and ask the question why, right? And I want to make this very, very, um, I want to make this statement. This message is for you if when you hear me, it goes right through you and it resonates in your body. You feel like I have no idea what she's talking about. Chances are it's not for you. Okay. Uh, for example, I've been dragged around ever since I was a very little girl to be always put on a stage and recite things in public, in groups. Only years later that I realized that life was preparing me from the very beginning to be in front of people and to speak. And I hated it every single time. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> So if you have an aversion to something, that's something to investigate, okay? Because an aversion to something generally means there is some unfinished business. There's some frequency around the idea of leadership in this, experience, in this example that is um, causing internal turmoil, okay? What does the universe want you to know? <laughs> Intuition. Hmm. I'm being asked to talk about lack. 
let me see what they want me to say. This is the image I get. You're doing your own thing. You're happy. I want to say you're painting walls. I don't know why. This must be, again, very specific message. Maybe this whole pile one is just one specific person. And you're doing your thing. You're happy. You, you, yeah, you're in control of it. And there's this whole other thing that's happening around you that you have no awareness of. I, that, I, I, I don't know. How, oh, okay, thank you. Let me just see how I can present it because it's a it's a big piece of information here. Here's what I want to say. There is so much more to everything than what you know. And your your intuition, your internal system is designed to have access to all the unknown, okay? Your intuition has access to this unknown. And you are capable of using your intuition in order to tap into this vastness of universal knowledge. For some reason, I keep hearing the voice, I can't, I can't, I can't. So, are you someone who denies your ability to connect with universal knowledge by saying, I can't? If this is you, I want you to look at your belief systems. What are you, what are you, what are you telling yourself? Because you are designed by design, you are designed to have access to this information. You're designed to have access to this information. In limited ways, yes, but have access. You have been told that you don't have this access, that very few people have this access. So you don't even bother having this access or Pardon me, you don't even bother trying out this access. And I think I was talking about access in the first video. So there's something there that you might want to look into. <clears throat> you have access to the entire universe, the whole population does. But many don't know it. For some, it is very scary because what do you mean there is something outside of this? How can that be? How can. It's, it's very confusing to the human mind because human mind is conditioned and that's its comfort zone. And the moment it gets rattled out of its comfort zone, then it becomes uncomfortable, okay? You are being encouraged to start using your intuition more in order to tap into this vastness. If you are afraid, then ask the question, what am I afraid of and why am I afraid? Why am I afraid of tapping into this vastness? Because there are some stories, stories you may not consciously remember that tell you why you have no access to this. In fact, some of these stories live in your own DNA. It's been programmed into you. Somebody had a reason. Let's leave it at that, okay? But you are inherently designed to have this access. Some program switches may have been turned off, but they can be turned on right now. Okay, get my drift? So, by using your intuition more, you are gaining more and more access to this universal knowledge. Practice it. And be mindful how you practice it. Okay? 
Be mindful what fills your head. What stories or information are you consuming? Are you consuming information that deter you from using your intuition in favor of using your logic and be scared? Or are you listening to information that helps you enhance your own intuitiveness so that you can communicate and access this vast knowledge, universal knowledge? Notice what you feed yourself. And then ask yourself this question, is this helping me experience more of who I am or is it keeping me more stuck in the limited? And then choose. Of course, if you would like help with that, I would be more than honored to help you figure it out with my team. Thank you so much, pile number one. Let's move on to pile number two. All right, pile number two, let's see what we have. What does the universe want you to, to know? I'm going to spoil a little surprise here. Your pile, pile number two, has the most cards. It's, it, it's doubled. They both, they all came together and they felt stuck. So I felt I needed to honor the stuckness <laughs> and communicate all the messages. I don't know what they are. So let's go through it together. What does the universe want you to know? The universe wants you to know universe. <laughs> you are at a space of completion. Very apropos for the lunar eclipse on May 5th, which the video talks about. The, the, the um, earlier video talks about. You are in a space of completion. Somehow the month of March, which was last month or now month and a half ago or so, uh, you've planted some seeds. What, while you are planting these seeds, you are thinking of something very important. In other words, you are planting some pretty important intentions. You are now in the process of going through a completion so that you can experience the 3D equivalent of the seeds that you've planted. Okay. But you have to move through it. You can't avoid it. So there is something that you are likely want to avoid, don't want to deal with, don't want to look at. And the universe says, as a matter of fact, whatever this thing is that you're avoiding, this is what you need to solve within yourself in order to experience this completion. Okay? And to experience the fruit of your intentions. Shadow is part of the self. <clears throat> and since it is the part of the self, then we must accept it. Otherwise, if we don't accept part of ourselves, we live in dissonance and we live in incongruency that doesn't feel very good okay yet virtually every human being has his or her shadows some more some less a lot of shadows arise from a situation of neglect emotional neglect primarily emotional neglect neglect and physical neglect so there's Many ways shadow can express itself for you. Pile number two, it has to deal with the idea of neglect and value. Okay. I have a feeling that many of you listening to this um, value yourself as less than because of what you didn't receive as you were growing up or as you were young. Okay. And if that's the case, and I presume it is, otherwise they wouldn't have me talking about it. You need to face this within you because it constantly keeps you in a state of lack. So this universe card being in upright position, by the way, symbolizes that you are at a completion point where this lack idea of yours 
can finally be released. Goodbye. I don't need you anymore. You've served the purpose. Thank you very much. Here's what I've learned. Ta-ta. So that's what the universe wants you to know. But if you ignore it, if you neglect it, if you ignore it, if you don't allow yourself to see this inner truth, then likely what will happen is you'll go through this process and you'll bring baggage with you where you're going and you're going to start to realize is that instead of the growth that you wanted, that you've planted, now you have weeds growing. Why weeds? I didn't plant for weeds. So what's the problem? What I'm saying here is this. Let the lunar eclipse be almost like an initiation for you to move from one frequency to another frequency, from one of lack to one of more abundance in terms of how you think and see about yourself and your value. Now, as far as value, let me speak to this for a moment. You're priceless. There is no one like you. You are unique in every way. That is your inherent value, which means you're priceless. You are priceless. There's no one like you. You're priceless. You have an individual perspective, which is extraordinarily valuable. Without you, there would be no your perspective. And the universe wants to experience all perspectives. So, in terms of value, to even indicate the idea that you have value, it's to minimize you. Okay, But we have to, since this is how the human work, let's just present it in that way. From a universe perspective, you are priceless. Now, if you do not see yourself as priceless, then what do you see yourself as? Okay. And then ask yourself, what does priceless mean to me? Okay. To some, priceless means it's, uh, it's too expensive. Well, something can be priceless, but also be shared. Okay. Being loved is priceless. You can't put a price on love, can you? People have tried, and it doesn't work. But love is shared. Pile number two, how do how have you learned to minimize you based on the experiences you've had? Okay. Let this be a moment where you decide to, to no longer keep yourself small. Because you're big, for God's sake. You're immense. In fact, you're immense. You remember, and I talked about this in the previous video, you forgot that you are your own universe. You're part of the universe itself. You're part of all that is. You are part of it. You're it. You're immense. So whatever value you assign yourself, especially one that's negative, it's preposterous. Preposterous. It's laughable. When you believe that you're small, based on who you really are, it's it's laughable. It, I'm, not, I'm not making fun at you. I'm not making, because I certainly had that experience and sometimes continue to have. But in a scheme of things, it's laughable. You're immense. You just don't feel that way yet. Hopefully the lunar eclipse will help you see that a little bit better. Okay. So this is what the universe wants you to know. What else do we have? Ah, okay. Material and spiritual prosperity. So this, this is symbolic to me, uh, for those of you who read cards, I'm again, not a tarot reader. I mostly go intuitively. Uh, June, you know, could be important. Uh, the month of June, uh, also June last year, 2022, was somehow important. Uh, for some of you, you've planted seeds in 2022, and now these seeds are becoming relevant. So it's taken a year, almost a year, for you to experience whatever you have planted 
last year. Okay. This is also interesting because it's not a, it, it, I don't feel a lot of movement. I just feel a place of kind of sort of contentment. So I, I, this coupled with con conclusion and completion and you feeling this way in your physicality, that, that's a good feeling to have. I like how it feels. It's settled. You're happy. You have clarity. You have a path in front of you. Yeah, you're not choosing this path yet, but it's available to you at any moment. And you can, just by changing your mind, you can step on this new path. So it's, it's kind of like you're waiting for something. You're waiting for something. Maybe you're waiting for the right moment. So even though there is completion and things are happening, there doesn't feel to be a lot of movement, which is interesting because pile number one had the opposite, right? Again, I read intuitively, so the Six of Pentacles may not talk about that at all, but that is how I see it, okay? Perhaps this is how you will be feeling. Perhaps right now you're feeling up and down and sideways, but this is this is how I see you when I project myself forward. Uh, May on, past May, okay? I like this. I really like what I'm seeing here. The corn is a message of harvest. So interesting, again, completion, uh, satiety, uh, being sa satiated, that's what I feel, which is the opposite of lack, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes. Maybe this is exactly what you are going to experience once you realize your own shadow of lack and then realize that my the value I put on myself is not where it should be in order for me to experience a lot more in life. And you decide to do something about it. And remember, I don't, if you haven't seen the first video yet, uh, it talks about uh, asking for help. Some of you having difficulties asking for help. Okay. Um, but what this is showing me is that what's upcoming for you is this content. It's this feeling of contentment on a physical level. I have a feeling you're going to get what you want. I don't often say that because um, it's a big statement to make. And like I say, I don't like predictions. I don't like doing them. Um, around fall, late summer, fall, maybe also a time where you experience what I'm feeling right now. It's, it just feels like a lot of contentment. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, we have another completion. So we have the universe and completion, literally like this, sandwiched, okay? And universe is completion. So we could say we have two completions going on. In this completion process, you are being reborn. And it's going to mean different things to different people. To reborn means to be born again. Feel refreshed. Have an experience when you feel like you're born. Reborn. Take off some baggage off your shoulders and feel like you're reborn. There's this feeling of being reborn. What I want to say is this. Don't avoid looking at your shadows, especially now. Don't avoid. Because I, I see so many beautiful opportunities just waiting for you to magnetize itself to you. But if you're still in this lack state, it, it, it can't get to you. It can't, it, it, it's like I want to grab it, but my energy is not there. So don't avoid looking at your shadows. That's a big, big, big one. Okay. Rest. We often find a lot of information in the quiet moments. What do I mean by that? 
this is a supportive message that says, it's not so much that you need more rest. Yes, some of you may need more rest, but this is more about slowing down, maybe being in nature, taking some deep breaths, relaxing your mind, and just acknowledging that you are a human, but that you are also more than a human. That as a human, you have needs and as a soul, you have needs and your soul wants to be acknowledged. Okay. Your soul is very connected to your inner child. Okay. Your shadows are part of your inner child structure. So if you are avoiding your shadows, you are also not in a loving relationship with your inner child, which is your connection to your soul. Okay. In other words, do you want to feel closer with your soul or do you want to be feel more at purpose with yourself or with life? Look at your shadows. Do some inner child work. Um, it's interesting. This is not what I was expecting on pile number two because it's like, these are powerful messages, completions, good opportunities, but there's also a message. It's all these opportunities are contingent on the work you will do with yourself for yourself. Okay. And to do the type of work that is being mentioned here, shadow work, inner child work, we have to create the right conditions. We have to do it from a restful place. What do I mean by that? You're not gonna do shadow work or inner child work in the middle of a busy store or in the middle of an intersection or in the middle of driving in traffic. You're not gonna do that because your ego is not gonna allow you to go deep for the purpose of, a crash, of preventing you crashing the car, okay? Because this type of work requires a lot of Deep introspection, deep introspection. And in order to give yourself this gift of deep introspection, you have to give yourself the time, create time in your life for inner work. Some of you are very familiar with the idea of self-sabotage. If you feel that you frequently self-sabotage and you've become expert at self-sabotage, why do I always self-sabotage? Well, you must have a good reason for that. And unless you realize what the reason is, unless you deal with the reason, which has its underlying story, right? Unless you deal with that, then you're always going to be in some level of state of self-sabotage. Perhaps you've planted a few months ago uh, seeds of to experience a lot more money or a beautiful relationship or whatever it may be. But you self-sabotage. You do, quote, can I say, dumb shit, <laughs> to um, keep you away from that goal. For example, Let's say you've asked the universe to present to you a partner, but you refuse to go on a date. I'm not going on a date. I don't want you to think that I'm your date. Well, how else do you propose it's going to happen? Well, that's obviously an example, but it's an interesting one. It's an interesting metaphor. You have to meet the universe halfway. The universe is not going to knock on your door and say, here, I'm bringing you whatever you asked for. Okay. Generally, that's not how it happens. Generally, you have to play your part. You play your part and the universe finds you. Okay. Be very mindful of shadow work right now. Or um, create a space in your own life where you can do some inner introspection and deep shadow work. Okay. Of course, um, I consider myself an expert in that. I believe that's what I was designed for. That's what I was born to do. Uh, so if that's something that you are interested in, my, me and my team would absolutely love to help you. Okay. 
I also see some second chakra stuff, okay? There's some second, second chakra slash commitment issues. Some of you have co issues with commitments. You are afraid of a committed relationship. Perhaps you're afraid of getting stuck or trapped. Okay, I've seen that many, many, many times before. Okay, and the, 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 the sad thing is, is that we don't even, most of the time, we don't even know that that mechanism exists until we start doing some digging and deeping, digging and deep digging. Okay. Also, when you're walking around, even at home, notice your body because they're suggesting here for you to just consciously relax your body. You're very tense. You're very tense. If you are naturally a tense person, there's got to be a reason for tension. Now, it could be learned, yes. There could be another reason for tension. Um, can we say that someone is a naturally a tensed person? No. You ten we tense up when our safety is being um, triggered or uprooted. It's, it's, it's to do with safety. Okay, So if you are someone who is often very tense, then um, A, you're constantly under alarm that something is going on, which is a high probability for anxiety. And when you're in anxiety, you're not going to hear your intuition very well. I can tell you that right now because, you know, anxiety and the stories attached to it, it's, it's what's going to be running through your mind. Um, and anxiety isn't, um, isn't helpful in anything. I mean, sometimes it is, but most of the time, anxiety just reduces your own vibration because it's fear-based, okay? So if you're someone who is very rigid or very tense, you might, you might want to investigate, why am I always so tense? What's going on? And I have a funny suspicion that some of that will be tied to chakra number two and chakra number one, safety, primarily safety, survival, okay? For some of you, and this is very specific, you may have lived in a household where there was a lot of yelling or even overconsumption of alcohol, and you've learned to be you've learned to be afraid. You, you've it's your safety was messed with. Okay. If that's the case, you will naturally be a fearful person if you haven't worked through it. If you're holding on to that energy, and you will often you will likely be an anxious person. And, and I will guarantee you that as a child, you have no way of dealing with that information. You have no way of, uh, of figuring out what to do with this anxiousness. You just hold it in your body. And if you haven't released that, if it hasn't been transformed, then it'll stick with you for as long as you live until you actually release it consciously. Okay. And you're at the point right now where you can release a lot of this pent up anxiety that is being produced by some level of fear. Okay. If you are a feel for person, you're also going to have difficulty trusting. The less you trust, the more fear for you are. The more feel for you are, the less you trust. Also, the more you trust, the less fear has control over you. Okay. So there's issues here around trusting, maybe trusting in relationships and commitments. Some of you have trust around money. You can't trust money. Some interesting dynamic, you can't, you want it, but you can't, you want it, but you can't have it. You have, um, you, you wish for it, but there is this heavy energy. It's like, I, I can't have it. I'm not, it's like, it's bad. You have challenges around money being bad in some way okay but for some of you there is a, a i can see alcoholism okay so if this means something to you uh likely it has a if you had that kind of an experience growing up it has obviously affected you in various ways and maybe you're still holding on to it right now um and the universe is saying to you ask for help create space where you can go within this type of shadow work is rarely 
uh, able to be done just by yourself because you simply don't know what you don't know. You can't you can't work with aspects you don't know about. So generally, you require to have someone who guides you through a process. Of course, if any of you are interested uh, or uh, willing to go through the process, um, my team and I would be more than honored. Okay. Um, I just feel May is very important for you guys on pile number two. So that's what I have for you, pile number two. Thank you very much. Hello, pile number three. Let's see what we have for you. Oh, yes. Rejoice in celebration. This is um, three of cups. Again, I'm not a tarot reader. But what this is symbolizing to me is that you have a reason to celebrate. There is something to be celebrating, celebrated, something worth celebrating. I'm gonna tune into more. I see you rising to the occasion and you are being upheld by many people who believe in you. Okay. You are somehow rising to the top in whatever capacity, okay? And you have an interesting position because you're rising to the top, whatever that means to you. People are supporting you in that. It's like you're standing on their shoulders. They're supporting you in this role and your function from this role is to see things that are not that are not easily seen or things that are not easily observable that's a metaphor okay this doesn't mean position in a company it could just be position as a human you might have a <clears throat> a position in a society in some way shape or form where you are at a certain level and because you are at this level, you have this ability to see things that are not easily accessible or, or easily um, seen, okay? You, it, it's a position of authority. I feel like many of you are perhaps graduating into this position of authority. I talked about authority, I believe, in pile number one, okay? I want to say you've done this work before. This is not your first time at this rodeo. You've done this thing before. In fact, it is often what scares you the most to be seen in public and to be seen like this, as someone who's able to see. Okay. Some of you don't feel worthy of having access to this ability to see. Um, I talked about Pile number two, I believe, or one. one. One, I think, about worthiness. So you might want to look at the different piles as well. Worthiness has nothing to do with it. You are worthy. Okay. Now, if you feel unworthy, that's something we need to talk about. Why do you feel unworthy of being in this position of having access? Too big of a responsibility? Okay, well, let's look at it. Why? Because it's, it's in you. It's in you, you're, you're, you're it. <sighs> Remember, based on video preceding this one, you chose to be here. Chose to be here for a reason. I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes, but you chose to be here. Something is here to be celebrated. Celebrate being you. Um, I also heard it's lonely at the top. Interesting. So some of you are actually moving up in a career where you will be in a position where um, you can see from a higher perspective, you can see things other people can't, uh, but it's lonely at the top. It's, 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 a, it's a one man's or a woman's job. I don't know who this is for, but it's, um, if this is you, you have an opportunity to make a difference. So notice how this lands with you. You may not understand what I'm saying right now in May until, May, 
June, July, until August, sometime in August. You may not, you may not, this may not mean anything to you until July or August, okay? There's something to be celebrated, that's August. I feel you're gonna get more out of this message in August. You're gonna go like, oh, that's what she was talking about, okay? So this is what your soul wants you to know. This is what the universe wants you to know. There's something to be celebrated, okay? It's something worthwhile celebrating. We have the Rainmaker, but it, is, it, it does come up in a reverse position. I, again, I read intuitively, okay? So the Rainmaker analogy for me symbolizes being able to make it rain, being able to do anything, being a powerful being, okay? What stops you from making things happen for yourself? What stops you? What prevents you from making things happen for yourself? What does your own identity tell you about you and who you're supposed to be? Okay. We already know that there is something to be celebrated. Okay. There's something, there's a raise of a status. And although, yes, it could be in a traditional setting, this is more a recognition of being that person right now, okay? You are to look at how you do not recognize yourself and your abilities. How do you not recognize your abilities? I'm gonna phrase it differently. How do you deny your abilities? What do you tell yourself to deny your abilities to create your reality? Because you do it every day. What, what do you, what do you, how do you deny that in you? Okay. What keeps you closed off to other opportunities? In other words, you are not open to other opportunities right now, but there's something to be celebrated. So maybe there might be. I think we talked about August. What stops you from you being truly and fully you? How do you support you? Those are the messages that the universe wants you to know especially around this eclipse, eclipse season, because what we are trying to accomplish here is to help you weed out the aspects of your thinking that you no longer need, but that is limiting your potential, okay? So we have to dig it out, we have to look at it. What about you do you feel is incomplete? I feel incomplete because da 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 da. I'm gonna be happy when I lose weight. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna feel satisfied when I reach this space. I am going to, I don't know, um, get excited uh, once I get, why not now? Why can't you be happy now? Well, because I don't have this or that. No, this or that is not happiness. It's your representation of what you think happiness is. Happiness lives within you all the time. It comes from you, it doesn't come from outside. You don't buy $5 worth of happiness. That's not how it works. It comes from within you. Do other things support your happiness or help you be more happy? Of course, but they themselves are not inherently happiness. Happiness is within you. You can have happiness now. If you don't have happiness, ask yourself why. Now, there may be legitimate things that are going on in your life that you are being challenged with, and yes, they're not making you happy. Okay, accept that's what it is for now, and also know that it will not stay there because that's not how life works, okay? Life is always ebb and flow. So if you are feeling, let's use the terminology, unhappy now, you actually might be going through some legitimate stuff. 
However, as you're going through these things, in certain situations, this may be an opportunity for you to rethink. Okay, I'm not I'm not happy right now. What would what would make me happy? What could I do better for me to make me feel happy? How can I find happiness? And again, when we say how can I find happiness, we're looking for source of happiness. Source of happiness is within. Okay? Source of happiness lives within it's not something you can purchase okay. there are many people in the world who seemingly have everything and they are one of the unhappiest people in the world because they feel empty on the inside you can't buy happiness it makes things easier yes but you can't buy happiness and nobody can give it to you, only you. People can support you in your happiness, or if they're not, I would say, sorry, you're not supporting my happiness, you know, but happiness is in you. And that is not to say that you shouldn't feel angry or mad or dissatisfied. No, this is, this is what a normal human being feels when he or she is in the body. Yes, those are all normal, very legitimate feelings and emotions. Have them. Just don't get stuck in any of them for too long because then if you get stuck with them, then you identify with it. If you are stuck feeling unhappy all the time, you will begin to think of yourself as an unhappy person. You're not supposed to be happy all the time. How would you know what happiness is if you were happy all the time? You wouldn't have the different, differential. You have to know the difference. To know what happy is, you have to experience what happy is not. Okay? So if you're unhappy right now, say, thank you, you the universe. I Now I know this is not what I want. Thank you very much. I don't want to repeat it again. Cut the cords. If you are someone who is not in love with yourself, and I don't mean this in arrogant way or in a narcissistic way. No, I don't mean it that way. If you don't, if you don't love you, if you don't support you, you are inherently will not feel happy being with you 100%. You will always be out seeking out for something to complete you or to make you happy. It's never going to work because that's not how it works. It's not how it works. Happiness comes from within you. Maybe redefine your happiness. Maybe redefine what you think happiness should be or is supposed to be. Well, this and this is supposed to make me happy. Okay. But is it? But is it? It's not what it's supposed to. It's, is it? Is it making you happy? Well, I was told that if I work hard and earn lots of money, I'm going to be happy. Okay. So what you're saying is that in order for you to be happy, you have to suffer. Well, that is a very interesting concept, isn't it? Hmm. In order for me to be happy, I have to suffer. I'm not sure I like that equation. Here's the point. You no longer have to suffer if you choose not to. Okay? You no longer have to suffer if you choose not to. How can I end human suffering? You can't, not as single-handedly, as a single-handed person. Not, you can't change that single-handedly. It's not, you're not supposed to do that. That's not what you're here for. But you can change that within yourself. How can you create a more peaceful world? I'll tell you how. Become more 
at peace within your own self. Have peace with you, in you. Be peaceful. Imagine everybody having more peace and being peaceful. Do you think we would have the problems that we do if we inherently were feeling more at peace with ourselves? No, we would not. But it requires tremendous effort. Okay. Often what stands in your own way is none other than you. You stand in your own way of, let's say, happiness. Okay. Well, why would I stand in my own way of happiness? Exactly. Why Why would you? Why would you want to stand in your own way of happiness? How, why, how silly is that? Well, one way it could be if you had some hidden belief systems that says you're not supposed to be happy. You're just supposed to live. You're supposed to be born, work, live, die. There's no room for happiness. You're supposed to be a robot. If you believe, if you have that kind of a belief system, and that's obviously exaggerated, you're not gonna you're gonna stand in your own way of happiness because you're told you're not supposed to. <laughs> Which means we have to redefine your belief systems. And to redefine your belief systems, we have to first become aware of them. Okay. Boundaries. This is really interesting because one message, here's you have um, celebrations. There's obviously something worth celebrating. And I think I know what it is. I think you. I think the celebration is about you getting it. Oh my God, I got it. It's me. I. It's me. It's my shadow. I tell myself these stories and based on what the stories I tell myself, I live out that experience. So if I keep telling myself I can't be happy, I literally live out the experience of not being happy because that's what I tell myself. I think that's the celebration. It's you going, holy shit. Pardon my friend. This card talks about boundaries and limitations. What you are saying here, what you're being encouraged here to consider is read the, if you, if you don't want to let go of your own limitations, of your own perceived limitations, at least limit your limitations, make them smaller, make them more compact, make them less threatening. Make them be a lot smaller than you. Because more often than not, our limitations feel bigger than we are. That's why we, we, we don't defy our limitations. We're scared of our limitations. We, don't, we just succumb to the limitations and the limitations win. You are an unlimited being. You have a body. That's a limitation. But in terms of the things you tell yourself, you're, in, you're virtually unlimited. So stop telling yourself the stories. I can't, I won't, I'm not supposed to. Unless you want to have that experience. If limitations are your standards, what does that mean? What does it mean if limitations are their standards? If you, con if you constantly look at yourself in terms of limitations and you're not clearing any of those old stories, then you can try and create a more magnificent life for yourself and whole, have all these ideas and have all these amazing visions. If you don't clear some of the limitations you have within yourself, those limitations are going to limit the very thing you are trying to create. <clears throat> it's a simple law of universal law, okay? You cannot experience something you don't believe in. You're not gonna give yourself the, you're not gonna give yourself the permission or at least be open to it, okay? If you have an idea that's ingrained in your mind through generations, I can't be happy unless I have this, this, or that, which makes it a very, 
it's not a lot of options. Like that's very limited ways of experiencing happiness. But if that's what you were told and your life looks different, then you're going to believe that you can't be happy unless you need the, unless you have those three things. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Pile number three, look at your own limitations. <clears throat> and acknowledge the fact that you are a powerful being. And acknowledge the fact that by being a powerful being, you are creating your limitations in a powerful way. You are powerfully limiting yourself. Do you realize that? When you realize that, have the celebration. Oh my God, I finally figured out how I stand on my own way. Holy cow, I've never seen it coming. Now to that I say, hallelujah. When you get to that state, when you realize, holy shit, I'm holding myself back and here's how. And oh my God, I'm doing this every day without even realizing I'm doing it. And now you know it, now you see it, now you're conscious, now you're aware. You know what happens? You begin to change. Not because it automatically changes, but you begin to make change. How? You start choosing differently. If you're always choosing the wrong man, perhaps by understanding yourself deeply, you will realize that you've been choosing the wrong man because you're used to a certain way of being. And now that you recognize this way of being and you do some inner healing and you release inner conflict, now you begin to attract somebody different. To get that awareness is very, very, very freeing. And I do hope, pile number three, this is what you get out of that. And the eclipse season, I believe, is going to help and almost like expose these different aspects of yourself that is going to be ultimately very healing and very freeing. I love what I'm seeing in pile number three. So that's what I have for you, pile number three. I hope this was helpful. I really enjoyed these, by the way. Again, if you haven't watched the first video, I would really encourage you to watch the first video uh, because it is uh, this is basically a continuation of. I talk a lot about the energies and what's going on, and I just found it to be very uh, enlightening, actually. Um, if you would like to work with me and my team in order to help you with your shadows, I'm an expert at that, to integrate, to help you basically experience fuller life. Uh, we would be absolutely honored to be a part of your unfolding, even if just for a little while. And I would love to hear your comments. Uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care of yourself. And by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed, liked, click the notification button. I would absolutely love for you to do that. It helps to... Uh, keep this channel grow going and hopefully growing by the amount of views that it gets in order to help bring as much people to this information so that every single human being has the opportunity and choice to free themselves. I would be very grateful. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <music>